Welcome to the third and final episode of the Women's History Month Speaker Series. My name is Anne Lauren Joko. Tonight I am joined by Anne Chung. Anne is the co-founder and president of A2 Empowerment. Anne, thank you so much for taking your time to be here tonight. Thank you so much, Anne Lauren. Um, I believe in the transformative power of education. It's been a thread running throughout my life. Both my parents are retired educators who instilled that value in me at a young age. And I felt proud as I watched my mother pursue, blossom as she pursued her PhD at the age of 50. Um, this value was reinforced as I watched close friends overcome the difficult circumstances of their childhoods to get an education, um, become independent and thrive. These stories encouraged me in my own pursuit of education. I received a teaching fellowship to attend graduate school. And during that time, teaching was one of the most favorite parts of that time in my life. Um, watching, it was a joy to watch the students uh, when I explained the concept and it clicked with them. Um, I used that education to get a job after I received my master's in biochemistry to get a job at Biogen, a biotechnology company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And while I was employed there, I always jumped at the chance to volunteer in their community lab, which is a state-of-the-art teaching lab that brings in local, middle, and high school students to instill the love of science and train the next generation of scientists. Um, and this education and my time at work afforded me many um, gifts, including the ability to support our family while my husband pursued his own education to get his PhD. So knowing this about my values, that's why it made sense to me when my dear friend Anne Rappin returned from her service as a Peace Corps volunteer in Cameroon and told me about the difficult circumstances that she and the other women in her village experienced. Um, and it um, she suggested girls' education as a way to um, address these issues. Anne was teaching high school science um, in a rural village called Binka in the Northwest region of Cameroon. And um, she, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Um, she, um, in, and in her upper level high school classes, less than 10% of the students would be girls. Um, uh, and this was because in Cameroon, school's not free. And as the, girl, as the students age up, it becomes more expensive. And when families are financially restricted, they can't always afford to send all of their children to school. So they'll often choose to send the boys over the girls because they think that boys have more potential. This can sometimes result in um, the girls getting married in arranged marriages at a young age, as young as age 13 and 14. And um, this further lessens the financial burden for their parents. Um, one story that uh, was really compelling that Anne told me about her time teaching was um, she was reviewing uh, some some questions for an exam that was coming up and only the boys were answering the questions. And she wanted to encourage the other students, the girls to answer as well. So she said, you know, um, everybody join in, um, boys and girls, everybody's capable of answering these questions. And one of the boys raised his hand and said, uh, no, madam, um, that's not correct. Boys are more capable than girls. And, and, and reassured the girls, no, um, that's not true. Uh, everybody can do this. Everybody's capable of uh, boys. Girls are just as good as boys. And at that point, a young woman in her class raised her hand and said, no, madam, he's correct. Boys are better and girls, girls belong out uh, working in the fields. So it was, these are some of the stories that are the reason why A2 Empowerment was born. A2 Empowerment is a nonprofit whose mission is to provide education and support to young women and girls so that they can 
increase their knowledge and empower themselves to lead healthier, more productive lives. We've mainly addressed this mission by awarding high school scholarships to young women who have dropped out of school or at high risk of dropping out. I have a video to share that explains our story beautifully. My name is Ann Chung. I'm a senior associate scientist and I've worked at Biogen almost 16 years in the protein biochemistry department. My mother inspired me to become a scientist. At a young age, I was exposed to science. She's a retired high school chemistry teacher. A2 Empowerment is a nonprofit company that awards scholarships to girls in Cameroon who have dropped out of high school or are at high risk of dropping out of high school. It came about in response to one of my dear friend's experiences as a Peace Corps volunteer in Cameroon. Um, when she returned from her service, she had these horrific stories of the injustices faced by women and girls. I heard her stories and I was compelled to do something and I kept asking her, what can we do, what can we do? And she said, how about girls scholarships? Around the same time, I received a referral bonus from Biogen at a time when it was doubled. So I said, okay, Anne, I have this money. I'm gonna take it and use it towards girls scholarships. And that year we sent 17 girls to school. I wanted to continue the project, but I didn't have that much money to put towards it every year, so we formed a nonprofit so that we could collect money and then distribute it. And since then, we've awarded over 500 scholarships. In 2011, I had the opportunity to travel to Cameroon and visit with a Peace Corps volunteer who took me to visit with 14 of the scholarship recipients in the Adamawa region. It was so rewarding. I walked in and the girls sang a song, Thanks to Me. They gave me huge hugs and just were, um, presented me with a beautiful outfit that I still have and I wear it for special occasions. When I was there, I was, had the opportunity to meet one of the fathers of one of the girls and he shook my hand um, with a sign of respect and he told me that his daughter went back to school because of the scholarship after being out of school for seven years. And he said um, that she completed her technical degree and now she can make a living. Um, and he doesn't cry for her if she, um, because he knows she can afford bread and afford soap. So um, that was very touching and one of the moments that I'll never forget and continues to motivate me um, to, to do more. And I think that, um, as a parent, how difficult it would be to be in that position. So I feel very lucky to, to help. I'm grateful to Biogen for creating that video in 2015 and allowing me to share it. Um, since the time that the video was made, A2 Empowerment has continued to grow. This is a map of Cameroon um, showing the number of scholarship recipients by region. And the darker the green, the more scholarship recipients. What started with 17 girls in that dark green middle section, the Adamawa region, grew through word of mouth, through Peace Corps volunteers to award over 2,000 scholarships across the country. The way the program operates is with the help of mentors working with their community to identify young women at high risk of dropping out of school. Um, those mentors help the students fill out their applications and send them to us for a ranking. And once we announce scholarship recipients, um, the, the mentors enroll the students and then they follow up with them throughout the school year meeting once a month in groups of students, usually between five to 15 students in a group to cover topics in our curriculum related to women's empowerment, like women's health and um, budgeting. Um, this group, this peer group is mentoring is important because uh, in a culture that sometimes devalues uh, these young women's lives, especially when it comes to education, um, it's important that they have the support of each other. Mentors also work together with their group uh, to develop a community project 
at some point during the school year. Examples include tutoring younger students or painting a world map like you see here, a mural, um, that provides an educational opportunity for the community. It's only $80 to cover a year of high school that covers the tuition, fees, and most supplies. And if the students meet the expectations of the program, we continue supporting them through to graduation. And we're currently expanding our university program to um, continue to help more girls. What I didn't know in 2008 when we started the program that I am aware of now is all of the research supporting girls' education as a leading means of reducing poverty and improving health in the developing world. Not only does giving a scholarship for a year of school make the young woman feel important, but it's also more likely that she'll be healthier. Enrollment in school makes it less likely that the young woman will get married off at a young age. And when girls are married young, there is a greater likelihood that they'll become pregnant at a young age when their bodies aren't fully developed. And this can have negative outcomes for not only the young mother, but her child as well. Uh, in fact, teenage pregnancy is the number one cause of death for girls age 15 to 19, according to the World Health Organization. Um, research also shows that poverty can be reduced through girls' education because it increases the likelihood of financial benefits and resources for the student and her family through employment. A World Bank study estimates that a girl with an extra year of education can earn between 10 to 20 percent more as an adult. And the benefits of education improve outcomes not only within the family, you know, these young, these mothers, by delaying pregnancy, the educated woman has children with improved health outcomes and she's more than twice as likely to send her own children to school when she's educated. Um, these benefits also extend outside of her own family to benefit her community and even her country. A report last year predicts that the gross domestic product of developing countries could increase by an average of 10% if all girls completed their secondary education by the year 2030. In addition, several studies suggest the remarkable importance of girls' education that girls' education can have on climate change especially through improved pl family planning. Although I agree with the critics of this argument that the burden of climate change shouldn't be put on the shoulders of those who are not the main, the primary culprits causing the damage, um, this is still a benefit of girls' education that's worth highlighting. And especially in these times where the pandemic has increased the vulnerability of women and girls and set back our progress, it's important to keep girls in school. A study I read describes the, uh, that was published in Lancet, describes the effects of school closures on girls, suggesting negative outcomes regarding gender equality and girl empowerment. The authors predict an increased risk of sexual exploitation, pregnancy, and forced marriage for girls, and an increase in unpaid housework for girls, resulting in less time studying and higher dropout rates. We're all connected, so when these young women do better, we all do better. And girls' education really works. Whole movies and books have been um, generated that support girls' education as a leading means of reducing poverty and improving health around the world. But it's actually Aid to Empowerment's own data and stories that motivate us to keep the program, program going because it's been so effective. We know that most scholarship recipients wouldn't be in school if it wasn't for the scholarships they received from the Aid to Empowerment. And just in that first year alone, we heard really compelling, of the seven, group of 17 girls, we heard compelling uh, reasons why we should continue with our program. For example, Emily Strauss, the amazing Peace Corps volunteer who helped us develop the program uh, that first year, told us about Gazelle, who applied for the scholarship because she wanted to stay in school. Emily wrote that Gazelle is the youngest of an enormous extended family. When she got the acceptance letter for the scholarship, we were told that she wouldn't go to school next year because arrangements had already been made to marry her off. She's 14. I was really disappointed, but said that we had better find another girl. 
One of my colleagues told me to wait two days. He went to talk to her family, and he, he and her older sister convinced her father to sign the consent form and go back on the marriage agreement. She'll be in school next year. Giselle is not the only young woman that we've helped in this way. Over the years, we've helped numerous young women get out of arranged marriages when they wanted to go to school instead. And, and like the young woman in the video that I mentioned, um, we've brought many young women back to school after getting kicked out because they, were, they became pregnant, which is the rule in Cameroon. There are so many stories of resilience and perseverance that we've collected over the years. One powerful story I love was relayed to us by a Peace Corps volunteer named Claire. Claire was actually in the video I shared. She's the volunteer who invited me to come and visit her to meet scholarship recipients in 2011. And she has since become one of my dearest friends. But in 2010, before I knew Claire, uh, she wrote to us about a young woman in her group named Africa. Claire wrote that Africa is an exceptionally bright student at the Technical High School in Laganga. She is studying to become an electrician, one of only seven girls in her class of 120. When asked why she chose to study this field, she replied that it's because everyone always says it's a man's job and she wants to prove them all wrong. The scholarship allowed young women like Africa to realize their dreams and serve as role models to other women in their community. And because of this, we've grown deep roots and our program has come full circle thanks to improved and increased access to technology like phones and WhatsApp. Uh, alumni of the program have been contacting us with an, interest in, with an interest in getting involved. Angel is one of those scholarship recipients. She received the scholarship back in 2010 and she recently reached out to us through social media. The scholarship program had been instrumental in her success and she wants to give back. Uh, when, she, when we asked her what impact the scholarship program had on her, Angel wrote, the scholarship was really a gift from heaven. I'm from a family of 14 children, of which I am the seventh. The scholarship helped my parents a lot and it motivated me enormously to continue studying. This scholarship allowed me to keep hope, to believe that it was still possible for my family and me to realize my dream. Thanks to you, Today, I hold a license in biology of animal organisms um, obtained in one of the best known universities here in Cameroon. Angel used her education to become an independent woman. And then another alumnus we're so proud of who contacted us through social media is named Grace. Um, and she was also mentored by Claire way back. Um, she recently contacted us through social media and um, she, we received the news that she used that foundation of that initial scholarship to not only finish high school and university, she went on to recently graduate with her master's in nutrition. When we asked her about the impact of the program on her, Grace wrote to us that this scholarship revived my desire to succeed because I did not attend for myself alone, but for many people who wanted me to succeed in my studies. I got up every morning saying that everything depended solely on me, my desire to get to the top of the hills or stay in the valley. And now these accomplished alumni, including Grace and Angel, are helping us to lead the project forward so we can empower even more young women. This is a chart of our history showing our growth over time by region. And you can see for the first 10 years, that organic growth that I told you about where we started with 17 young women in 2008 and grew to 2018 where we awarded 483 students. Um, the dip in 2019 corresponds to changes imposed by Peace Corps that limited our ability to communicate with Peace Corps volunteers. We knew that this would impair our program so we scaled back our work with Peace Corps um, but for a long time, we had wanted to become more sustainable by working directly with Cameroonians. And luckily, by this time, we had um, encouraged Peace Corps volunteers um, during our growth to get Cameroonians, to ask Cameroonians to be involved as co-mentors. And having these connections allowed us to shift to have Cameroonian educators become the next mentors. 
To help ensure a smooth transition and quality program, we started small with this new model, so we're regrowing right now. And this transition to work with Cameroonian partners was actually a blessing because it allowed us to continue our program even after all the Peace Corps volunteers were evacuated due to the pandemic in 2020. With this transition to work directly with Cameroonians, uh, the coordination of the project uh, became more complicated when we lost the oversight and some of the infrastructure that Peace Corps had provided to us. Um, we started working with a project coordinator in Cameroon named Buba to help address this. And he was monitoring the program and uh, we were happy for him when he got into graduate school in the United States uh, later that year, but um, it did make things more difficult for us. So we, um, then I became the temporary coordinator and it became really clear that that was not a sustainable model. <laughs> Luckily around this time is when we did start to hear from those alumni and they wanted to get involved. And so we did start to work with them to, um, we started by uh, working with me to do the monthly calls into the groups of students meeting with their mentors and to check in with the mentors. And that was so successful that we wanna take it even further. So that leads me to our current transition. Um, Grace and Angel are currently working with a group of A2 Empower a2 Empowerment Mentors and Scholarship Recipients to form a sister organization, A2 Empowerment Cameroon. They're one signature away from approval, and once they're officially approved, we'll gradually and thoughtfully shift the responsibilities to them in Cameroon. And the U.S. organization will become more of a support with the goal of A2 Empowerment becoming a sustainable organization that uh, we hope puts the U.S. side out of business <laughs> because our support's no longer needed. This is very exciting. Um, we'll not only be supporting young women through education, but we'll be giving them jobs and paying them salaries so they can lead healthier, more productive lives, further solidifying our mission. Um, and until the time uh, that the U.S. organization dissolves, um, we see the U.S. side providing the oversight and support to ensure that both sides are operating effectively and optimally and safely, and we'll also be funding their, their work. And the way that we've raised our funds over the years is mainly through individual donations, um, including through fundraising events we've organized. Uh, like performances of the all women swing orchestra, the mood swings, running 5Ks and marathons, century bike rides, swims, and family barbecue and pool parties. Some people have even donated uh, their wedding uh, proceeds and birthday gifts as um, donations. And through, through these events, um, we've grown a community that has helped us ensure that funding has never been the limiting factor in determining the number of scholarships we can award. If you share my belief in the transformative power of education and in its positive ripple effect, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to become part of our A2 Empowerment community. You can support us through a donation, volunteering your time and skills, attending our events, and following us on social media and subscribing to our newsletter. We only send out two to three email updates a year, and by signing up, you'll be able to follow our exciting transition over time. Please visit our website to find all of the links to join this community, and our website is www.a2empowerment.org. By doing this, you will be empowering young women through education for years to come. Just like A2 Empowerment, I'm myself going through a transition. Um, this image is from 2015 when I was listed as a Fortune Magazine Hero of the 500. And the video I showed was produced to publicize the announcement of this honor internally within Biogen. Um, <laughs> at that time, I was doing too much. I was uh, managing the nonprofit. I was working full time. I had two young kids. I was taking MBA classes and we were buying a house. Um, and 
running was a way that I decompressed. And when I became injured uh, at a medical, under medical care, um, and I could no longer run, my world fell apart. I suffered from depression and severe anxiety. Um, and um, it took about two years, but through the help and support of medical professionals and medication, I found my way out. And I know that a lot of people struggle with mental health, and I want you to know there's help, help out there. Um, I'm grateful for what the experience taught me. I gained a healthier life balance, tools to manage my mental health, like meditation, and I learned the signs of burnout and depression for me. And when I started to see those signs show up for me again in 2019, when I was working at a demanding startup company, while those changes with Peace Corps uh, were making managing the nonprofit more complicated, um, I had to make a choice to maintain my mental health and I chose to leave my career in science. Uh, this allowed me time to work, focus on the nonprofit full time. It gave me time um, to s more time to spend with my family and it allowed me time to fill in the gaps uh, of my self-taught nonprofit knowledge. Um, I was lucky to be accepted into the Institute for a Nonprofit Practice Core Certificate Program, um, and I highly recommend this program if you're in the nonprofit field. Um, the skills I learned and the mentoring I received will continue to shape aid to empowerment, especially re related to equity and decision making. Other books that have helped guide our direction are Decolonizing Wealth and Emergent Strategy. These books present alternatives to oppressive work cultures that are so common today. I recognize that I have incredible privilege to take this break and achieve what I've done. Um, I have a loving, supportive husband who is a true partner and being a white, cisgender, able-bodied person has allowed me great privilege that I often take, I think I've taken um, for granted. Um, but I have also experienced adversity. Uh, as a woman in science, there are times that I experienced bias and prejudice. And as a child, there were times when I felt unsafe and like I didn't belong. I learned to appease people, to avoid their anger, and I tried to make myself invisible to avoid the bullying that I experienced. But just like Aid to Empowerment, I continue to learn and grow and I'm working to overcome these behaviors that no longer serve me. Um, that's part of what I'm doing here tonight by choosing my love for the young women Aid to Empowerment serves and the power of education over my fear. It's difficult for me to sit here, <laughs> you can tell. Um, I'm a shy introvert, but um, remembering that it's for the young women that we serve helps me overcome my discomfort and every time that I do something like this, uh, I learn and grow and new unexpected opportunities arise. I believe in this as a universal truth that when you give from your heart, you'll receive in abundance. It's contrary to what our culture of scarcity and competition would have you believe. If you're an introvert like me, I hope you recognize that you can have value as a leader. Um, my beautiful sister first introduced me to this book, Quiet, and reading it for the first time was the first time I felt like it was okay to be the way that I am, that there isn't something wrong with me that needs to be fixed. Other authors that have reinforced this theme for me are Brene Brown and Adam Grant. And Jim Collins' book about visionary companies argues that companies with the most successful, that they are most successful related to longevity are exclusive exclusively read by, led by thoughtful, humble leaders. So introverted leaders like us have value. I hope I've illustrated that by offering an education to these young women, I've become more educated and through my efforts to empower women, this program has empowered me and that there's um, educating girls can make a huge difference in the world. Tonight is a great example of, of that empowerment for me. Uh, the Danvers Human Rights and Inclusion Committee has given me a huge gift to amplify my voice so I could give a voice to others. 
And I'm so grateful to your organization for this opportunity and to be in the company of the other amazing speakers in this series who I learned so much from. I've spent time to think about what I want the impact of my life to be. And I think it's most important to me uh, how I make people feel. I want them to uh, feel loved and my kindness. Um, and the reason that I feel that way is because I love to feel loved. And so many people who have done that for me are watching tonight, so I just want to say a quick thank you um, while I have this platform because I wouldn't be sitting here without them. Uh, starting with my friend Jorge, who I literally wouldn't be sitting here without <laughs> him because he's the, the person who put my name forward for this opportunity. So thank you, Jorge, for um, believing that I, in me that I could do this. Um, every, every person who's been a part of this Aid to Empowerment community, from the scholarship recipients and mentors to the dedicated board members, our CPA Tom, who's been with us from the beginning, generous donors, the Bergman family, and so many volunteers. Uh, I don't take your trust and support for granted, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Of course, my fearless co-pilot and partner on this glorious, um, sometimes turbulent ride, Anne Rappin. Uh, you're awe-inspiring, and you'll always be one of my heroes. And um, my girlfriends, all my ladies, and all the ladies who have supported my growth, I think you know who you are, and I hope I've already let you know how you've enhanced my life. Um, my special friend, Lois Contreras, along with uh, my teacher, Anthony Talinda, and my mentor, Werner Meyer, have had a great influence on my life. My incredible family loved me so much, I think, um, because I never felt deprived of love. It's easy for me to be a giving person, um, especially my amazing parents who have made so many sacrifices for me. My mom's my greatest role model, and my beautiful sister always supports me. I love them beyond words. Uh, from here to the north, as my dad would say, and I think my dad would also say, go Bills. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my incredible husband has given me the most amazing gifts, including our boys and this opportunity now to explore my career. Um, from deciding together that my original bonus should be put towards the scholarships to watching our kids so I could focus on A2 Empowerment to building and maintaining our website and um, taking over the bookkeeping when I uh, wasn't feeling so well in 2015. Um, he's been a main contributor and I share my every success with him. It's truly, just remarkable. Uh, really grateful for him every day. And finally, my, my sons, Simon and Calvin, um, they're my greatest joy and it's been my greatest privilege to be your mom and watch you grow and learn. Sometimes A2 Empowerment's taken away my time with you, um, and I feel sad about that, but I love that it gave you more time with your dad so he can um, model what an equal partner does in a relationship. And I hope I've modeled, <laughs> sorry, mm -hmm. I've modeled how you can choose love over fear, you know, follow your passion, stand up against injustice, and be true to yourself. And I hope the transformative power of education propels you to find your passion. And that's what I hope for all of us, that we keep an open mind, continue to learn and grow, and um, use our skills to help others. Because we're all connected, all human lives have value, and we all have skills that we can give. And when you channel love and kindness to help others, we all do better. So don't be afraid to give with your heart and see where it takes you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Anne, we do have one question that came in via email. Um, it's from Jessica, who's a student at Colton Richmond Middle School, and she'd like to know how many times you have been to Cameroon and when you will be going back. Oh, that's a good question. So, I've only been to Cameroon once, and that was in 2011 when my friend Claire 
now my friend Claire invited me. We became pretty quick uh, friends in that trip. <laughs> um, and I haven't gone back because I paid for that trip with my own money. And um, it just, I know that I could, I could send so many girls to school with the money that I spent on that trip. And there hasn't been a need for me to go back since then. Um, although it was really good to see our impact in it really motivated me and we also used it as a learning experience to improve the program. Um, but now that things have changed uh, and we're, we're moving towards this new model, I think I predict that either Ann Rappin or myself um, will go back uh, rather soon to check in on the program and uh, help with training. Um, in the future, do you think, or would you ever think of expanding A2 Empowerment to like other third world countries um, where girls also need support and like education and stuff like that? You know, I, um, because there was a, there is such a need in Cameroon, mm -hmm. we've been focusing on that. But I think our logo leaves that option open. And uh, before Peace Corps changed their models, we were talking with them about expanding into Senegal. So we are leaving that option open. Mm. Um, at the same time, there is so much need in Cameroon that um, for the foreseeable future, we're, we're focusing there. Yes. Um, and do you think um, after the pandemic, we'll have a um, Peace Corps volunteer go back to Cameroon? Definitely. Actually, uh, I follow them on social media, and they've just sent their first group of of trainees into the Dominican Republic um, since the pandemic has started. So they are gradually um, starting to repopulate uh, where they had been before. And this whole time, um, the administrators at Peace Corps Cameroon have been there on the ground um, working. So they're preparing for those Peace Corps volunteers to come in, and I, I bet it would be relatively soon. And um, what's your biggest motivation or inspiration in continuing A2 Empowerment? Um, my biggest inspiration is just um, knowing how much these young women want to go to school and wanting to provide them an avenue to get there. Um, so that's why even though sometimes it does, I do, it does get hard and I, I want to quit, I, I won't quit and I'm going to keep doing this because um, I know there's a great need and if I can help others in this way to kind of like realize the same success I've had, um, I want to do that. Um, and what do you think women's empowerment or feminism really means to you and how has that meaning sort of um, impacted your work with the girls in Cameroon? Um, to me, uh, feminism means equality and equity for all no matter uh, how you identify uh, with your gender. And um, I think Aid to Empowerment is my subtle way of moving um, towards that by creating more opportunities uh, for these young women. Um, yeah, I tend to move in quiet ways like that, um, but I, I think it can make have a huge effect and make a big difference. Um, I recently saw an interview with a young woman who was afraid to identify as a feminist. And I, I wonder if that, that's because she was doing work that made me think that she was a feminist. Um, I think that the definition sometimes people get confused about is that it means that women don't like men or they don't want men to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that it, it means that we all do better mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Very insightful. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about A2 Empowerment or sponsor a year scholarship for just $80, please visit a2empowerment.org. And quickly, the chairman of Danvers Human Rights and Inclusion, Dr. Joko, is going to say a few words. Thank you, thank you. I'm on the camera shot there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Danvers. Thank you, and thank you so much for coming and doing this. Thank you, Anne Lauren, for being here. Um, the work that you do on behalf of the Danvers Human Rights and Inclusion Committee, I want to thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the work that you do is amazing. 
the investment on human capital has no price. And I can tell you now, uh, full disclosure, um, I'm a Cameroon native, and this was not arranged, so uh, it wasn't me. So <laughs> um, it, it really meant a lot to me to see the work that you do, because I know the need in Cameroon. I know what those young girls go through. And I know there's at least one of them watching from Cameroon. So if you guys can allow me, I'll say something in the dialect. Garum ZBN na fati bala bugabi pra. Puja seku, badanya seku. E hamu tadula bi pa gomga puna gyo seku be ali fogzi hapu bi pra. Je dis juste merci beaucoup à Anne pour tout ce qu'elle fait pour nos jeunes filles au Cameroun. Étudier, aller à l'école, l'éducation vous amènera très loin. I'm just saying thank you very much for everything that you do for those girls. I'm urging them to please continue with their education because that is the one thing that nobody will ever take away from them and that can take them very, very far. So I want to thank you very much. And I would also like to take this opportunity uh, to let you know that when we told the friends of the Danvers Committee for Diversity, which is a 501 c who help us do some of the work that we do at the Danvers Human Rights for and Inclusion Committee, uh, they offer to donate five scholarships to the girls of Cameroon. Oh, so thank you so much. Here we go. Um, thank you so much. Thank so the, the friends of the Danvers uh, Committee for Diversity have said it's just, it's not much. Uh, they want to encourage you to continue the good work and hopefully next year there are five more women who are able to go to school. Thank so you so much. This means so much. No I'm problem. very grateful. Really so grateful. Thank you very much and I also want to end by thanking Lila, we are on Lila, uh, Claudia and you Anne for this uh, Women History Month series, and thank you for the subcommittee, Eileen, Kristen, and all the subcommittee members who work very hard to put this together. And on that note, this ends our program, and this ends our 2022 Women History Month speaker series. Thank you, the inverse, and have a good night. <laughs>